Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me is JP Theriot, co-founder of the Universal Protocol Alliance and CEO of Uphold to discuss the world's first tradable carbon token on a public blockchain and why this year may go down as the inflection point for climate change. JP, it's great to have you back with us. Welcome back to Trade Talks. Thank you for having me. The Universal Protocol Alliance, or the UPA, launched the world's first tradable carbon token on a public blockchain. Why launch this type of token, and what solution is it looking to provide? What's it backed by? Sure. So it will, I'll start with the last part first. So it's backed by uh, essentially a carbon credit on one of the leading registries, which in this case is Vera. There's a few out there, but Vera has about 70% market share. Um, it's a voluntary carbon credit, which unlike compliance or allocation carbon, which is what say airlines would trade with each other in a given year in Europe, voluntary credits are, are permanent. They're evergreen. So they don't expire from one year to the next. Within voluntary credits, there's a bunch of different categories. We went with what's known as red credits, which are essentially um, averted deforestation of rainforests. So the world's big rainforests are obviously in the Amazon, in the Congo Basin, and in Indonesia. And so, you know, unlike other types of carbon, we figured this is a good place to start. They're not controversial. It's not hydropower. It's not wind, which have some drawbacks. These have ancillary benefits, which aren't priced in, like preserving biodiversity and helping uh, indigenous cultures. Um, so we thought it was the right sort of uncontroversial place to start. Uh, amazingly, unlike with gold or oil, there is no global clearing price for carbon. And given that it's, you know, it's the defining uh, element, the, the defining issue of a generation or more to come, uh, it's kind of astonishing that there isn't uh, a global clearing price, that it remains uh, such a fragmented uh, market. Um, so by digitizing it and, and, and tokenizing it, we hope that there'll be uptake, that it'll start to establish a, a global reference price, um, and that people will work it into their you know, portfolios. Uh, an interesting study is that you know, millennials who are obviously very comfortable with crypto also agree that the climate crisis is, is you know, top on the agenda. So astonishing with such an overlap that this product didn't already exist. Uh, it was sort of right there in front of our noses. So we're, we're very excited about it. Once you digitize and make fractionable something like this, a lot of uh, things you, you didn't think about beforehand start to happen. So immediately we realized we could bundle it with a Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin is wonderful, but it has a very heavy carbon footprint. It's a very you know, dirty financial instrument. So being able to produce one that is carbon neutral, which we did almost immediately after launching UPCO2, is one example of the nature thing you can start to do. Tell us more about the UPA. So the UPA uh, was founded by a bunch of like-minded, uh, I think, leaders in, in the blockchain space. Today, it's comprised of ourselves, Bittrex, which is a large exchange, Ledger, which is the leading a hardware uh, storage device. And, and in our case, we use their enterprise solution, the, the Ledger Vault. Uh, Certic, which is out of uh, the Yale Applied Math Department, which, which does you know, most of the, or I should say is a leading provider of code security audits uh, in the crypto space. Uh, and then uh, uh, Hard Yakka, which is Greg Kidd's uh, portfolio of FinTech investments, uh, which include, you know, too many companies to mention, uh, and Fifth Era, which is another um, another fintech uh, investment firm. Do you think this is an inflection point for climate change? Could this be the most dominant economic issue in the long term? Well, I, I think I think it should be in the in the short and, and middle term, in the sense that you know it's pretty amazing that even before Trump, you know, Obama was not a signatory to, to some of the international uh, accords, right? The, the U.S. has uh, sort of remained apart from what is otherwise a largely global effort to, to tackle, again, what is the defining issue uh, of a generation. Um, you know, I, I personally think that it's not a question of you know, if we do this, jobs will be lost or competitiveness will be lost. I, that's, that's to me, a complete myth. Uh, other types of jobs will be created. And all it is is putting proper accounting on the release of a ton of 
carbon every year. Today, our token trades at around 10 bucks. Lots of studies are out there that suggest that maybe 70 bucks is the right price to be able to release a ton of carbon pollution you know, every year. That's, that's an interesting speculation. Making it accessible for retail speculation for the first time is a really interesting prospect. And it opens up the possibility for a generation to vote with their wallet in a way different from you know, reaching for the organic bananas, right? I think, I think another way of voting for, for your, with, with your wallet is to give Tesla a market cap that you know, Warren Buffett and other you know, market elders would consider completely irrational, but maybe a younger generation thinks, no, I, I like this view of the world better than I like, you know, I don't know, Berkshire Hathaway's view of the world. So, so unleashing those speculative you know, animal spirits into an issue that is so relevant to a generation, I think is a, is a, is a really compelling uh, initiative. Right. And JP, I would agree with you there. I mean, in my mind, there is no downside for doing the right thing for the planet. You have the opportunity with rebuilding infrastructure, moving along, you know, with alternative energy, with green investments and so forth. That's the right way to re-educate a workforce that is so far behind and you're creating high salary jobs to only help us move forward. So I'm in complete agreement with you. And this brings me to my final question as we speak on Inauguration Day. How will the new Biden administration impact climate change and digital assets? It sounds like, back to what you were saying before, this could potentially be the inflection point to get us over the hump. Well, you know, I, I hope they will do more, obviously more than the Trump administration, but, but I hope they'll do more than even the, the Obama administration. And maybe the world has changed enough with, you know, I, I don't think under Obama we had, you know, California burning down to the extent it has in the past couple of years or Australia or, you know, whatever it was, five or seven hurricanes twisting in the Atlantic at once. It's clear that a lot of these effects that people thought would be further down the road or, or you know, conceptual are, are here and now. And, and so I, everything I've heard from the incoming administration suggests to me that it's a, a, a top of agenda uh, item. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to them following through. All right, JP, great to catch up with you as always. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks and thanks for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Thank you very much.